Hey guys, I'm Nick Harrison, and today I'm gonna to be talking about different ways that you can join two pieces of plywood together in a corner fashion, plywood joinery. So if you're doing a box glue up, a cabinet making glue up, some sort of carcass glue up for a cabinet, a drawer box, whatever, there's multiple ways that you can join two pieces of plywood together in a corner. And today I'm gonna to talk about seven ways that you can do that. Um, these can be used for a variety of different applications, but that's what we're dealing with. The first way that you can do that is with a simple miter joint. It's a 45 degree miter and the two pieces, a piece is cut at 45 degrees, 45 degrees, they go together like this. Now to physically join these two together, you can either do brad nails on each face, you can do wood screws on each face, you can do glue on each face, or you can do a combination of anything I just said. So the first one is a 45 degree miter joint for plywood. The second method is a rabbit joint. And basically the way this works is you have a rabbit or a, a slot cut down thinned on one edge. Um, that would be the same thickness as your next piece of plywood. See how that kind of fits in there real nicely. And then the benefit of doing this is you have two glue surfaces now. You have the one against the plywood as well as on this little lip. So your joint's gonna be a lot stronger. For reinforcement, you can also use pin nails or brad nails in the end. Another method of a rabbit joint is a little bit smaller groove cut and then the same thing would be cut on this side and they would kind of lock into each other. They would lock into each other basically opposite cuts um, so that you would have multiple, you'd have in that case four gluing surfaces to make a really strong joint. So a rabbit joint is another option. The next type of joint is a pocket hole. We've all seen them, we've all done them. Commonly used on cabinets and drawers. Um, basically pocket holes get drilled in onto one piece of plywood and then pocket hole screws get screwed in there into the other piece of plywood. This is beneficial because it's a fairly strong joint, especially if you use it in combination with wood glue, but also um, it leaves this face completely clean. There's nothing, you don't see anything on here. You don't see any nails, you don't see any screws. It's completely a clean face so that you can hide this either on the side or the back maybe. The next type of joint on two pieces of plywood in a corner, this is probably the most common, it's definitely the quickest, is a simple butt joint with wood screws. And a butt joint means you just butt the two pieces next to each other and then you drill some wood screws in on the back there. The next style of joint, and this is getting a little bit more advanced, but not terrible, is a finger joint, sometimes called a box joint. I actually think there's a difference between those two, but I'm not sure what the difference is. This is a super strong joint because there is a ton of surface area for wood glue to be um, stuck to. So basically, you can kind of see here how this works. It's like fingers that come together like this. And this right now is without any wood glue and I can move it because again, it's not glued in, but it's kind of hard to move. So that just goes to show you how much how, how strong this joint can be. So this joint is for a finger joint or sometimes called a box joint for this type of plywood joinery. The next simplest method besides the butt joint with wood screws is just wood glue. This is a butt joint again. It's just glued onto here with just wood glue. This is super strong. I could probably break it if I wanted to, but I would more than likely break the fibers of the wood before I would actually break the glue joint. Super strong, super easy, flush edges, wood glue is an option too. The last and final joinery method that I'll talk about here is just brad nails. Going in from one edge, no glue, no nothing. A lot of times if you're gonna do this, you would want to add glue, but for this example, I did not. Again, not super strong, but it is an option, especially on thinner material or longer brad nails. Um, it's like I said, quick and easy. Just put the two pieces together, butt them together, shoot some brad nails in the end. There you have it. The benefit of this is that they're very easy to putty and cover up without a big screw head that you're gonna notice from far away. Now I'm gonna talk about some of the applications of when I personally would use each one of these joints. Some of them, you're gonna hear me say cabinets because that's normally where you see plywood used and normally where you see plywood used in a corner joint fashion. So the first one being a rabbit joint. I hardly ever use this because it does take a little bit of time, but I would use this if I was doing a super custom piece that had um, some really nice wooden drawers in it. The back of the drawers I would probably use rabbits in. You can take it one step further and do dovetails, but that is, very time consuming and on, to my opinion on the back of drawers, people just don't wanna pay for my time to do dovetails. So um, rabbits are, are an option that I would use on the back of some drawers, possibly in a custom cabinet piece. 
Miter joints. I use these a lot on just simple boxes and shelves. Um, one tip when making miter joints is to cut these a little bit less than 45 degrees. So when you do that, if you were to put these flush together, the inside angle and the outside angle for that matter are going to be um, a little less than 90 degrees, maybe 88, 89. But you're going to ensure that the outside joint is completely flush, crisp, no gaps, is tight. Now, if you have your saws dialed in correctly, and I do, and so I cut mine at a perfect 45, and as you can see here, both the outside joint and the inside joint are completely tight. But if you're having a problem getting the outside joint tight, cut your miters maybe at 44 and a half or something like that, just to get a little bit where you can ensure that that outside joint is tight. But what I would use for the 45 degree miters is boxes. Um, like I said, boxes, shelves. Um, I don't really use it a whole lot, um, period, a whole lot, just because it's kind of hard to glue up. Um, but they are quick and easy. And like I said, doesn't take a lot of skill to do them. Wood screw joint. What I usually use this for, simply, plain and simple, is shop furniture. I don't care that the wood screws can be seen. I try to do it on the back of stuff and on the side of stuff, but just a butt joint with wood screws, easy, cheap, shop furniture. I don't really care how it looks. Brad nails. What I usually do use these for are shelves and boxes that are hung in my shop. Um, I usually use these I usually use these on a smaller material, not always on three quarter inch material. I don't use these very often, but occasionally that's what I use them for. Wood glue joint. To be honest with you, I never use just wood glue. I usually use this in combination with one of the other types of joints, but I did just make this for this video just to kind of show you that it is an option. It is super strong, but again, I usually use it in combination with another type of joint. Pocket holes. What do I use this for? Cabinets all the time. Whether I'm doing shop furniture or custom pieces, pocket holes are normally the way to go, especially on drawers at the back because you normally don't see it when the drawer pours out, you're not gonna see cabinet holes or pocket holes. Um, again, I use pocket holes a lot for um, cabinets. Last one is finger joints. I very rarely use these. Um, I probably should use them more often, but I just don't. If you were making like a custom case, like a watch case or a wine box or something, you could, you could do something like this because especially on hardwood, it is very nice to see the end grain sometimes. Um, but on plywood, I don't use it often, but again, it is an option and it is super strong. Hope this video was beneficial to you. If you found it helpful, be sure to give it a like down below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on my future videos. Thank you for watching. If you like that video, click over here. I have some more videos queued up for you that I think you'll enjoy.